Good evening. May we never lose the wonder, the wonder of the cross. Amen. Thank you, choir, for that lovely rendition preceded by violin solo from Rhoda. We really appreciate all your effort. It's our turn to sing together. We are turning to hymn number 1014, SSNS 1014. You're welcome to our revival service tonight. Similar one welcome is extended to our internet audience, wherever you are. We pray that the Lord who is here with us to bless we certainly bless you too. Amen. We are going to take verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. I saw a way one traveler. Verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. We're going to stand up to sing all these four verses. We have Sister Olos to come forward to please direct us. Verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. And we are standing up to sing all those four verses at the end of which we shall be led in prayer. Francis will come forward to lead us in congregational prayer. Dear Lord, we look forward to that day Amen. when we shall be crowned in glory Amen. and there shall be stars on our crown. Amen. And then, Lord, we will bow before you Amen. and we will worship you in holiness. Amen. Lord, we pray tonight Amen. if there are names that are not yet written among those that shall win this crown in heaven. Lord, please, let them be won tonight. Amen. Let such souls be won to your kingdom tonight. Amen. Father, we pray that those that have been saved will be sanctified. Amen. And those that have been sanctified will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
We ask, oh God, that the message will come forth tonight with power. It will come forth with authority. And Lord, there shall be healing. You will deliver and you will bless us greatly. Thank you for answered prayers, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Once again, you are welcome to our revival service for tonight. For tomorrow, Lord willing, our schedule, we begin with um, general morning prayer at 5.30. As I mentioned in the morning, that will be the last um, combined um, morning prayer for everyone, 5.30 to 6.30, and I want to encourage you to please be part of that. Well, um, I did something that I have not done myself, perhaps you are in my category, and I want to ask you to break that as well. Maybe some of us don't know that there is um, breakfast available at only two pounds. I've not been able to visit that uh, little makeshift restaurant of ours. I was there this morning, and guess what? It was a free day. So I had my breakfast free, and everyone that was coming in, you keep your two pounds. You don't need to, to, to pay anything. You, you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow morning. <laughs> Neither do you know what is going to happen on Sunday morning. You have two mornings left. They didn't tell me that they are going to declare another morning free. But just to encourage you, if you have not visited that place, especially as your supplies may now be running down, may be running out, um, that place is still there and is very nice. So um, if you want to go there tomorrow morning, um, please be free to, I mean, take the advantage to be there. Then the ordinance service at 10, um, water baptism service at 3, then we have the evening service at 7.30. Usually in the afternoon we don't have um, restaurant sitting kind of arrangement that we've been having before now. It's going to be barbecue um, after um, our an ordinance service. Okay, and on top of that, then in the afternoon too, we have water baptism service. We pray that the weather will permit. Brother Dara told me this afternoon that um, we don't believe in sprinkling. We believe in total immersion. And we saw some sprinkling this afternoon. So we need to look forward to what will happen tomorrow because our baptism service is still going to be by immersion. And I told him that we need to check the weather. So we have tried to check the weather. And it looks like if what has been uh, has said will happen, will happen. If God will take it, um, it's going to be a lovely weather tomorrow afternoon. So we're going to have that lovely afternoon for our baptismal service outside. But if not, we have done it inside before. So I think what I'm trying to say is that the um, baptismal service will still hold at the um, um, scheduled time of 3 p.m. DVD, CD available to um, have um, from the AV group. As for the restaurant help tomorrow, well, a big thank you to our people from Birmingham, Germany, and New York. They did a fantastic job. So for tomorrow, it's going to be our brethren from Coventry, Botswana, Denmark, France, and all delegates from Nigeria. Delegates. Not all Nigerians, but delegates. Tonight, from 9.15 p.m., all those who have registered for water baptism, and I've looked through the registration, I saw that we already have um, quite a good number of names. And for those of you that have not registered, and since the Lord has saved your soul, you are yet to be water baptized, we encourage you to put your name down. But from 9.15 tonight, those who have put down their names should please go to the camp office where they will meet with um, people that have some specific instructions to pass on to them. Very important that you make yourself available from that 9.15 upward. If you pray through tonight, maybe at 10 or 11 or 
early hours of the morning, please, you, you, are still, uh, uh, you can still uh, arrange through the camp office to take part in the baptismal service um, at 3 p.m. Um, tomorrow, by God's grace. I understand that we have nine countries represented at our camp meeting. We have two from Botswana, one from Denmark, one from Zimbabwe, 17 from France, five from Germany, 11 from Nigeria, those are the delegates. Eight from United States, five from Spain, and for the United Kingdom, for all our four regions, beginning with Northern Ireland, we have six, Scotland, we have 13, Wales, we have eight. England, we cannot even put the number down. So you're all welcome. You've made the camp meeting a special time. And perhaps we've not had the opportunity to just um, embrace someone or, or say hello to someone. For tonight, we want to sing the more we are together. Together, we want to take that opportunity to move around and shake the hand of someone that you've not had the opportunity to, to do that with. We're going to stand up to do that in a bit. Sister Olos will come forward to direct the more we are together, the happier we shall be.
waiting for the last person to sit down. Don't be the last person to sit down. We are waiting to see the last person to take his or her seat. We are waiting, we are waiting. Some are still standing, waiting. Who is that last lady or that last young man? Is that, is that Naomi or is that Naomi or someone else? God bless you all. Thank you for making the camera in a great time. Sister We'll sing um, SSMS three one two tune three zero nine tune three zero nine SSMS SSMS three one two once more O oh Lord we pray we'll take um, verse one and three only verses one and three only. the choir giving us um, my God can do anything at the end of which one of them will start with testimony and then um, we have one or two from the audience and then we have the last um, special which is a solo by brother Shen Widowu before brother Tony Mitola will bring the word of the Lord as the choir is getting ready I was corrected that um, our people from Botswana there are not just only two in case the three people from Botswana are looking at themselves, but we are three. And then they are saying two. Who is, who is, who is not registered? It's our mistake. We are all registered. So we have three instead of two that I called from Botswana. Sister Alos, my God can do anything.
want to stand up to, um, sorry, I'm already standing. I want to uh, <laughs> thank God for what he's done for me. Um, I want to thank God first of all, most especially for saving my soul, for um, sanctifying me and baptizing me with the Holy Ghost. Um, I want to go thank God especially for protection, because um, I, as part of my job, I drive a lot. And obviously this camp meeting, I was here at the beginning, had to go back to work and drive him back. And I really thank God for his protection. Amen. I thank God especially for the drive back last night because I was by myself, but it gave me time to reflect, to pray, to talk to God. And, you know, for some time I've just been feeling I'm not where I need to be. I need to spend more time to pray, you know, and I really thank God for the opportunity. I thank God that even in the midst of my praying and talking to God, I didn't crash. I was still f uh, focusing on where I was going. But, you know, I really thank God. I don't see myself as somebody who deserves his kindness, who deserves his love. Or, but, you know, even when I'm failing, and I mean constantly failing, God's out of love, out of mercy, he yeah. just brings me back and tells me, you know, I'm here for you, I will be with you. And you know, at times you and you feel really discouraged, maybe through work, through home, through family life and everything else. But you know, God is always there to whisper that he is um, there for me. And you know, when he says that, that he, I am that I am, you know, that is just when God gave me that promise, he says, I am here for you and you know with his help and his strength he's helping me to hold on to him i don't know how long it may be or how short but heaven's my goal Amen. even if he has to drag me i don't mind but i just have to get there and i pray that you two will join me and we'll see face to face Amen. I, I really appreciate his grace and favor in my life uh, my journey has not been easy i just want to thank god that he saved me, Amen. sanctified me, and baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. I thought everything was nice. Um, I, I started as a young person. I joined the um, Young People's Movement. That's when I got saved. And then when I was there, I just felt that longing to be closer to God. But I didn't know. And then the, this young person said to me, I'm, I'm inviting you to this church, to this church. And I kept on saying to me, uh, come to this church. Because I had that longing to know more about God, I went. And I went to, that's the time that I went to the apostolic faith. And that's when he, you know, I heard about the sanctification. I, I pressed on, God sanctified me, baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. And it was joy, it was wonderful. And then God, uh, in his grace, uh, gave me a husband in, in, in the apostolic faith, and it was really, really good. And, um, well, unfortunately, you know, my husband passed away. I, I, my mind locked, kind of, I just stopped thinking. It's like you stop thinking, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to go on. Uh, it was just, just very, very difficult. I remember the time when I, I just got to think and to start talking, really, I think after two weeks, I just found myself I could not talk anymore. My tongue was kind of stuck. I could not talk. It was like I was starting to learn to talk again. But you know, God is so wonderful. Yeah. He, he, he gave me the opportunity of coming um, to UK in his own grace. I do not know how it I managed, but God has seen me through. When I met the challenges, I just said I wanted to, go, to move closer to God. God re-anointed me in a special way. I decided to, on my own, I went into my own room. God uh, gave me this uh, salvation, sanctification, and started afresh. But God has been so good. He provided, you know, when I needed anything, God has been my strength in everything. And I, can, I give God the glory and honor, and can you please continue praying for me? my God can do anything. Yes. When I was 13, uh, I was invited to Apostolic Faith. I, went, I came here to watch, uh, I came, went to Antony to watch a youth program. And same day, God saved my soul. Yes. And I was so happy because I was very young then. I was just 13. And when I get home, I started telling my mom because we live with her mom then. I was telling my mom everything about what I have and everything. My mom was against it. And I begged her 
that I want to go to that church. That is where I've been looking for. But he said no. He said, you know what? You have to choose me or you choose that church. So, but God helped me because I told my mom, I said, I'm going to choose that church. So, and she sent me out. But thank God because I was sleeping in the church. No, but God is with me. So she thought uh, she would, she does everything. It's a long story, but I'm not going to say everything now. She does everything that for me to regret. But instead for me to regret, God gave me joy. So when it is time for me to get married, I don't even pray for a husband because I thought who's going to marry a church rat like me. But God in his way, God find me a husband. Not even ordinary husband. He's a God rate and he has a good job. I was so happy. But along the line, he, because I, I'm a secondary school leaver, so he enrolled me to back to school. I do my NC, so he want me to come to UK to further more. But because I was born here, I couldn't have a passport because my mommy do everything not to get anything. So I went to the embassy and I said, I need to renew my passport and everything. And they said, you not exist because your mom say you dead. How do you come up again? And I said, well, then I was dead, but Jesus raised me up. So... I, it took me like 10 years, but I keep on going. I did not lose faith. But God brings me, not only me, with all my kids here. Yeah. And I give glory to God. Looking back as I was climbing the podium because I don't want somebody to quickly jump up. Okay, now we have one, two, three kids and a brother at the back. Those four, two minutes max, at the end of which we shall listen to the last special before the word of the Lord. I just want Sorry. to thank the Lord. Oh, on the gallery? Sorry, I didn't see you. Okay. Two on, oh, two on the gallery. Okay, we're going to have all the six, but one minute, 60 seconds each. Please, thank you. I was not uh, planning to stand up to testify, but God brought to my mind the scripture in Matthew when Jesus cleansed the ten lepers and only one of them came to give glory to God. So Jesus saved me in 2004, but unfortunately I lost my salvation through one reason or the other. And I was really despondent until I, I came to the camp meeting last year and I heard the message of um, there is hope in a tree, that if a tree is cut down with the scent of water, that tree will bud again. God must have seen my state because the preacher even went on to say, even if the stump is removed, but with God, God can make that uh, uh, tree to have roots again. God saved me again and it's been a year of victory for me. I thank God for that. I've got God has given me a wife, two children, which the doctors had said we can't have. My wife had a dead ovary, according to the doctor, and one which had a little bit of life. But God gave us two children from that, so we give glory to God. Please pray for me that God sanctifies me and baptizes me during this camp meeting. Thank God because of all the good things he's done for me. I want to thank God for helping me pass my SATS exams. I want to thank God for saving me and sanctifying me yesterday. To testify to the power of the Lord. There is power in Jesus Christ. Once I was a sinner, in 1977 at Antony, the Lord saved my soul. He sanctified me, baptized me with Holy Ghost and fire. In the gospel, I'm about to clock 40 years. Praise God for me. I got married in the gospel. He gave me children. And God has been taking good care of us. How I found myself in this camp meeting, 
I cannot say, but the Lord did it for me. In his own economy, praise God on my behalf. Last year when we were at the camp meeting, I was just praying that the Lord should deliver my daughter safely. And I'm holding a daughter now that the Lord has given me. I praise the name of that Lord. In May, I was crying to the Lord, God, when will I see my grandchildren? When will I see my grandchildren? God has given me the opportunity to see my grandchildren. I want to get to heaven. Because this gospel is so precious to me. Please pray for me. I want to thank God for, save, and for saving me from um, dying. Because when I was going to school, I nearly got hit by a car. And um, I, someone pushed me and I fell on the floor and the car was coming straight at me. But I thank God that he, he stopped the car and I didn't die. to thank God for helping me around April or May um, we were having an assembly in school and my name was called up and I had realized it was me and I was surprised and I had realized that my assistant head teacher said that I had gotten a like job to do in another school and, and during, Ju during June or May I was able to go there I got there safely and I came back safely strong and I was happy ago we're meeting our new teacher that we're going to have in year five and we had this piece of assignment that we had to write that showed which level we're going to be in year five and out of the five people I came top of all of them sinful world hardly a comfort can afford striving alone to face temptation so where could I go but to the Lord where could I go Seeking a refuge for my soul Needing a friend to save me in the hand Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them everyone Sweet accord, that when my soul meets manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul Needing a friend to save me in the end Where could I go but to the Life here is grand With friends I love so dear Comfort I get From God's own word Yet 
when I face the chilling hand of death. Where could I go that's to the Lord? Where could I go? A refuge for my soul Needing a friend To save me in the end Where could I go? Where could I go? Where could I go? But to the Shall we open to the book of John, chapter 8, verse 36? If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, Amen. ye shall be free indeed. Amen. 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 We have a prayer that we all want to pray now. And that prayer also serves as the title of what God has in stock for us this evening. And that prayer is, Lord, set me free. Amen. 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 Lord, set me free. Amen. Before we can request for freedom, before we can say, Lord, set us free, we must first of all acknowledge the fact that we are in bondage. Yeah. It is a thing to know that you are in bondage and it is another thing to not to know that you are in bondage and yet you are in it. Is that not dangerous? Because there are times we look at the word bondage as if it is only when we physically take a set of chains and bind someone. But there are lots of bondages we put ourselves that we are in. When we talk about bondage, it is a situation where you find yourself in a state that you cannot help yourself you will find yourself doing something that you cannot stop doing. You try every means to control or to stop such a thing. But you can't. But glory be to God. Amen. There is a power above all powers. Yes. Jesus said, I have all power. All power on earth and in heaven belongs to me. Yes. Therefore, no matter how thick or thin, the chain of bondage is Jesus can set it loose. Amen. It is not a new thing to start to ask yourself bondage. What well, am I in any bondage? I'm looking good. I am handsome. I'm beautiful. I ride a good car. I live in a good home. I eat what I want. I drink what I want. I go to where I want to go to. That is when you look at bondage with the physical eye. But when you look at bondage with your spiritual eye, you will know, and as we go on, you will see a lot of us are in bondage. But the Lord, just like we have prayed, will set us free this evening in Jesus' name. Do you know many a times we use the word, it's his weakness. Is her weakness. Do you know we use those words to encourage ourselves? Or rather, we are deceiving ourselves. The proper word to use is bondage. When you find yourself doing something, and maybe at times 
God helping you, you find, you, you discover that, why am I doing this thing? But yet, you cannot stop it. You know, it, it is easy at times to point, ah, that guy that fights, it is his weakness. That person that tells lies, when he says good money, look at the sky very well and see if it is actually good money. That is his weakness. I want to tell you, that definition you are giving to him is just a simple one. The language and the right definition is that that person is in a bondage and he cannot set himself free. John chapter 8 verse 32. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What is this truth? The word of God. And what is the word of God? Jesus. Amen. If you are in any kind of bondage, know the truth. Not mental knowledge. Hey, I know Jesus. Who is Jesus? The son of uh, Joseph the carpenter. No. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his mind. When you know Jesus, you can know, just like the Christ has sang, that he can do anything. When Jesus told the Jews, just like you may ask, what, what, I'm free. Why, what, why is this man saying we are in bondage and the Lord should set us free? Set us free from where? If you think that, it is not a new thing. The Jews did. The, the Jews did. He said, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed. I'm a pastor's child. I am this, I am that. I have been in the church even before the church was founded. I am this, I am that. We be Abraham's seed. And we never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall, made, ye shall be made free? But Jesus, what a wonderful Savior. Verse 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. That is the simple definition of bondage. You have not been saved from your life of sin. You are living in sin. You are committing sin. You are in bondage. But Jesus is here to set you free tonight. That is why we are gathered here. We are not in the camp meeting for, like it was referred to, just to fellowship and walk away. We are here so that Jesus, with his power, can set the captives free. We are here because Jesus wants people to decamp from the camp of the enemy to the camp of Jesus Christ. We are here because Jesus wants us to realign our focus and be sure that we are not just running a race on earth here, we have a determination yes. and we are going somewhere. Yes. No wonder the title of the lesson, Landmarks. I've never seen anybody go into a place without a direction. Amen. Amen. We are here for a purpose. Yes. And God is going to ensure that this purpose is achieved in Jesus' name. Yes. When we determine, once we acknowledge the fact that we are in bondage, you know, there's an adage or a saying. The day the madman stands up and say, Hello everyone, I am mad. That day his healing began. The moment he realizes, and the moment you realize that you are in bondage, you now have, in fact, double opportunity. Because you do not just realize, you also know there is a bondage breaker. Amen. And that is Jesus. Amen. Because all power belongs unto him. Amen. There are some kind of bondage, physically, you put yourself and you think human being can help you. But not all. We hear of people who are in prisons, 
Maybe for one reason or the other, they have mercy upon them, they reduce their tenor, or they set them free, and so on and so forth. But when the devil puts you in prison, no one delivers you. No highest court. You can't appeal to anyone. It is only Jesus that has the power. Because that was his purpose of going to the cross. To deliver you and to deliver me. Amen. Amen. As many as are in the bondage of sin tonight, the Lord is going to set them free. All you need to do is acknowledge that you are in this bondage and the Lord will set you free. There are other types of bondages. We may not be able to analyze all because of our time. But you know one thing? God has put a mechanism in every human being to, in such that whatever bondage you are in, no one needs to tell you. You know it yourself. You, may, you might be saying you are not in any bondage, but let's go ahead. Are you the person that when you are approaching someone or a group of people, the comment goes like this. He's coming. She's coming. Let's watch. As soon as he gets here, as soon as she gets here, this place will be scattered. If you are that type, you are in the bondage of discord. You are in the bondage of disunity. We learned this morning the power of sweet fellowship. Glory be to God. Amen. There is deliverance. Yes. Amen. Are you the one that says, well, let him go his way and I go my way. I have nothing to do with him. You are in the bondage of unforgiveness. Yeah. That has been said. When the, hey, how many Peter, how many said, are you saying seven? Jesus said, no, no. 70 times 7. Are you the type that you be referred to uh, if you just want BBC or CN to get or CNN to get any information? Tell that sister. Tell that brother. You are in the bondage of backbiting. And the Lord will deliver you. Yeah. You know one funny thing about backbiting? People who do it at times when they realize, I've seen someone slap his mouth, slap the cheeks. Ah, and I didn't want to say this. You know. Why how did I find myself saying it? It is not the cheeks. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Some we call it, it is a slip of tongue. Since God made man and put the tongue there, it has been slippery. Amen? May the Lord deliver you. My brother this afternoon was counting the number of sermons. You have heard the word of God several times. There's nothing you need to, that, that you needed for salvation that has not been given to you, that has not been taught you, that has not been be, 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 be prayed over for you. And yet, you still say your salvation is tomorrow in the bondage of procrastination. The Lord will deliver you. Are you the type that walks to the car park and you see somebody's car and the next moment you are arranging the finance to get one? Even when your resources cannot. Uh, when Brazil was in the prayer room, he told us about uh, the frequent prayer for uh, Lord, settle my debt. And when Brother came, with due respect, he confirmed it. 
What a wonderful identification. The Lord has given you, even before you were born, the resources that you need to live until you die, the Lord has made it for you. But are you contented with what you have? Are you acquiring something because you need it or because you saw it in someone? Are you buying or acquiring something because you just saw it? It is not that you even need it. Or you are envy that somebody has it and you don't have it. The, the Bible says we should be contented with what we have. Bondage of discontentment. May the Lord deliver us. Yeah. Are you the one causing confusion? The landmarks have been set to give direction. And the Bible says this arrow should face the left where the road is where the way is, where the Bible has put it, the way the Bible has set it down. And you come and say, no, this is a new age. You take that signpost and turn the arrow to the right. And those following you come over and get there and they are confused. And the bondage of landmark removers or changers. The Bible has said, one man, one wife. And you say, ah, that was those days. Now, this is how it is. You can take, if it does not blend with you, drop and take another one. That is not what the Bible said. And people are getting confused. Because they look unto you. They see you as their example. The Bible says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Yes. Personal uh, 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 contact, relationship, you say, no, that is not the way of salvation. The Bible says, we need to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You said, once we are saved, sanctification is not necessary. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is not necessary. And you are leading and making people get confused. May we not change the landmark. Yeah. That bondage, whoever is in that bondage, the Lord is here to set such a one free. Yeah. The bondage of sickness. You know, people have gotten to the level where they customize sickness. Do you know how they do it? When you say, how are you? Are you okay? Uh, I'm a bit okay, but you know that my sickness. <laughs> May that not be your portion. Yeah. The Bible said in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 that if you will diligently yeah. hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right and keep his commandment, he said, I will bring None of these diseases which I have brought upon the Egyptian, for I am the Lord that healeth you. Whatever the type of sickness, no matter what name has been given to it, no matter what description, no matter what form, in the name of Jesus, you will be set free in Jesus' name. Jesus has completed the work on the cross of Calvary, and he said it is finished. You know, I said earlier, the list of bondage is a very long one. But the Spirit of God will not fail to point to you which bondage you are. But glory be to God. Tonight, we are going to sing song of deliverance. We are going to sing song of victory. What bondage are you? The blood is flowing. The blood is flowing. He will set you free tonight. Just acknowledge the bondage you are into. He will set you free. 
He's here to answer your prayer tonight. C come to the altars and apply that precious blood and you will go home rejoicing in Jesus' name. we thank you. We give glory and honor unto you, O God. We thank you for your word. Lord, you know how we are, O God. Before you, O Lord, we are some, we are in bondage. But tonight, Lord, you want to deliver us. Deliver us, O God. Save souls tonight. Sanctify and baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Lord, you know you can do it for us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.